What's up guys, welcome back to the MSR Workshop. So I am gonna be doing an unboxing of a great big desktop laser that Monport was so kind enough to send to me for, for review. I think you guys will like this one, so stick around. All right, guys, so let's talk about this unboxing here. So this is the Monport Reno 45 that Monport was kind enough to send to me. And this is not my first experience with Monport lasers. I did a bunch of videos on the K40, which is their 40 watt, really beginner CO2 laser. And this is definitely a step up for me. First off, taking it out of the box, there was about 16 gazillion screws to take off the top. And you definitely want two people to help lift this out because it was packaged well. So starting off with just getting it out of the crate that it comes in, which is quite large. Um, looking over this laser, I believe this was a slightly used laser that Monport sent to me for review. So not everything is perfectly brand new. Now this is the duct work on the back and it's a five inch duct, which is a little bit of an odd size. Most of the time you get four inch or six inch, but it came with a five inch, which is just a little bit larger. And then the K40, which was that four inch. Now here is your water pump for the really basic water chilling for your laser tube on the back. Definitely if you got a K40, well, definitely if you got a Reno 45, I would probably invest in something better. And I'm going to be hooking this up to my actual laser chiller, which has got a compressor in it that actually cools the water down instead of just, you know, an evaporative cooler, which blows it over some coils. Now, bags of goodies, you've got your manual. And I don't know if this is the updated manual or if this is the original manual. It seems pretty basic, but um, it works okay. That right here is the little screw to raise and lower the bed. Yes, this does have an adjustable bed with an adjustable, well, focusable laser uh, beam, which is really nice. The K40 didn't have that, so it was really kind of finicky, and you're really limited on what you could cut just because you couldn't uh, focus it. That right there, I believe, is a focusing block, but don't quote me on that, but we will check that here a little bit later. Uh, taking the rest of the packing out, you'll notice the little pieces of blue tape all over here. So the blue tape is where they have put little clips on the rubber gantry, uh, whatever you want to call them, to keep the bed from moving back and forth. So you'll take all those little blue pieces of tape off. And right here, I'm actually putting in the laser knives. Now they looked brand new. It doesn't look like they've been used, but I usually like to have the knives in. And then I put my honeycomb bed over the top of it just because it does add some extra support, just in case you do have something heavy and that keeps the honeycomb from sagging at all. So getting those little pieces of blue tape and you can see the clips right there on the rubber. Uh, that makes the thing go back and forth. I'm drawing a blank what that little rubber piece is called. The belts, that's it, the belts. And there's one on each side. This laser also does come with homing sensors. So right, left, back and forth, you do have uh, stops for those, which is nice instead of just being somewhere in the program. Next, I want to kind of get into the machine since this is a slightly used machine. Normally, you wouldn't have to do this, but I like to kind of look my machine over, kind of take it apart, look at the guts, make sure everything arrived nice. Now, this back plate here is where your laser tube is at, and they put so many screws on this thing. It's a little bit of an overkill. First, you have all these little black caps that you've got to remove, and then underneath the black caps, you have these little five millimeter allen screws that you got to put out with these little retaining things to screw the black caps on when you're done but monport could have put a few less screws even just an access door on the back so you can inspect your laser tube because that is something that you want to inspect every now and then just to make sure you don't have any cracks in it or you're not getting like a buildup of say mold or mildew um, and you want to make sure you do use distilled water to help limit any uh, build up on the inside of your laser tube. 
So here is the actual laser tube that comes with the Reno 45 and it is rated at a 45 watt. It's a little bit more powerful than the K40 which I believe was just rated at a 40 watt. So we'll see how thick of stuff we can cut and what kind of performance you get on this. But overall the looks of the machine just looks really nice and clean and sleek. They could have just done with a few extra screws in my opinion. Next, we are going to clean the lens on this. Since this was a slightly used machine, it's really important to clean your lenses. Also look around at your mirrors. And first thing you'll do is you'll push that little blue thing down and then you've got two Allen screws that will let you drop the laser lens out, or at least the lens assembly. And so pull straight down after you loosen those and here is where your lens is at. And if you look closely, this has a little dot on the center. That means it was dirty and because it got dirty and the laser was hitting that dirt, it kind of like burns it on there a little bit. So it's one important thing to do because if you don't keep it clean and it continues to hit that, it'll actually start to damage the lens. Um, also, of course, if your mirrors aren't clean, it will affect your power output as well. So you just take this little here and you screw that and then the lens will fall off. And one interesting thing about this lens is most of the lenses I've messed with on other lasers, you'll have a flat side and you'll have a kind of a curved side. This did not seem to have a difference on sides. So that was a little strange, but hey, that's okay. But it definitely did need to be cleaned. And just looking at it there, you'll see that there's not really a difference in the two sides. Um, if you happen to get a laser with one of the sides that's curved, you definitely want to put the curved side down and the convex side up because if you think of it like a V that's how your beam is going to focus and so it starts wide and then narrows to a point. So that's why whenever your laser is out of focus you really have a fat line that it creates um, and so it's important to get that little V to the closest point you can. So straightening that back out we're going to go ahead and tighten those two little Allen screws up and it doesn't really matter where you put it per se. Now dependent on where your preset block is going to be you may need to adjust this slightly but we can check that later when we go to do some test cuts just to kind of see how crisp and clean and small our line is because you want it as small as possible. Now I'm going to go ahead and put one of the mirrors back in. This is one that I pulled out. This is just the one that goes right on top. This one's really easy to remove. The others, I would recommend getting some like specialized Q-tips that are made for cleaning camera lenses. And then you put a little bit of camera cleaning solution on those and you can just wipe those clean. This one comes out really easy. It just drops right in there on top. And then you have a little screw on cap that just holds it in place. So you don't have to worry about realigning this particular mirror because it just sits down flat in this. The other ones, if you do pull them out, you may have to end up realigning the mirrors. And that's a whole nother process that we probably won't get into in this video. There's quite a few videos on YouTube. All right, next we're going to go ahead and connect it up to light burn. So hit the button that says devices and then find my laser and when it finds it you're going to hit next and you'll see this top wisdom tla1 controller that says 400 by 300 and select that and hit add device so once you hit add device you'll pop up with the x-axis and y-axis settings and it should already be programmed for you um, to 400 by 300 but if it's not you can change that there but here's also where you can rename it and we renamed it the Reno 45 Pro. Next, we're going to tell it to home to the top right corner because that's where your limit switch is and it will home there. And then just hit finish and OK through there. Now go down to your devices in your right hand corner and select your Reno 45 Pro that we just created. Now once you do that, your machine should automatically home and just to check if it moves where it's supposed to, you can click on that little red icon that I did on the left 
and click somewhere on your bed and your machine should move. Now sometimes you may have to restart Lightburn after the very first time of doing this, but once you've selected everything, it should home automatically on startup. So next, preparing your workpiece, you want to focus your laser head. So you have this little pull down thing where you want it to just barely kiss whatever workpiece you have underneath it. And your whole bed raises up and down. There's four, I don't know if you want to call them jack screws or whatever. And then you have this tool that it provided in here where you turn it and you raise it up until basically the little thing will pop up back just barely it pops back up in it now if you're unsure about the overall height you have this little acrylic block that you want to slide under your laser head that is a checker just to make sure you got the head just right So here we threw in a piece of two mil Baltic birch plywood just to do a test cut and a little bit of engraving. So the engraving that we are going to be doing here is just a small picture of my logo. And we are actually going to engrave it and then cut it out when it's done. So according to Monport, this machine will go up to 600 millimeters a second. Now, it may be programmed a little bit different when you start up Lightburn, and you can look at the default machine settings, and I believe you can change them. But here we are engraving at 400 millimeters a second, which is pretty blazingly fast, if you ask me. Now, I know different types of lasers and even more expensive fancy lasers can go faster than that. But for this size of bed, just because your nozzle has to speed up and slow down, and the faster you do this, the harder it is for the machine sometimes to speed up and slow down in that confined space. So 400 millimeters a second, and we did this at 30% power and 200 lines per inch, and we just did a left and right pattern. We did not do a crosshatch is really really fast and this is in real time i'm not speeding anything up we do have the air assist enabled which is doing a great job now it is a small air compressor pump in the back which can be upgraded at a later date to one that uses a solenoid because the tla1 controller does have the option to add a wind which is a little solenoid relay which will turn on and off your air and you can have this hooked up to an external compressor and then really dial up the air assist on this. And now on my larger laser, I have done this and I have it running at about 30 PSI and it just really, really cleans the cutout, actually helps you engrave quite a bit deeper just because you're blowing any of the char and sawdust out of the cut and does a really, really nice job. So I'll actually be doing another video on that. On the K40, I actually wasn't able to do that, but I went ahead and connected it to an external air compressor, which really did amp the machine up to the next level. But so far, this has done an exceptionally well job. I don't see a lot of charring or burning on this, and we'll get some close-ups of this. But as you can see, this really did a nice job. Here's where I got my camera finally focused. And I don't see really any burring on the cut. The edges look nice and clean. It did a nice deep engrave. It was very smooth. I don't see gaps in the back and forth movement, which sometimes is an indication of either a loose belt or air in the code with the machine. Everything looks really, really nice and smooth, especially for being plywood. So very impressed. All right, guys, that is it for this particular video. I know I just really scratched the surface on what this Reno 45 Pro can do. But if you stay tuned on my channel, we will be doing some more review videos on this just to kind of see what kind of things you can make on it. But if you want to know more about the Reno 45 Pro or all of its really cool features, I would definitely encourage you to check out my link below. It will get you a little bit of a discount on that. Also, it does help out the channel. Now, the only thing I would say that this machine is missing is it doesn't have an onboard camera. Well, Monport thought of a solution for that, and they came out with the Vision 45 Pro, which is basically the same machine, but it does add that camera capability to it. Now, you can add an aftermarket camera to it, 
which does work pretty well, and I may end up doing that on this one. But as it sits, this machine is really simple to use. It is blazingly fast. That cut that I just did, I did at about 400 millimeters a second at about 30% power. Worked really, really well. Only took maybe about a minute and a half, maybe even less than that to complete that job. And the video that was of the machine doing that cut was in real time. So there wasn't any speeding up of that. That was in real time. So you saw how great of a job it couldn't do. If you guys want to know more about this or if I left something out, be sure and leave them in the comments. And as always, guys, stay tuned for that next video. Thanks again.